Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to quickly introduce the idea of vectors, which is a really powerful tool in physics and show some examples of how it works. So let's jump right into it. So when you measure things in physics, they can be either a scalar or a vector. And vector is what we want to focus on, but it's important to make the distinction between the two, right? So a scalar is a physical quantity that has magnitude only, magnitude only. And magnitude is just a fancy word for size. So how big something is or how long something is, all right? Um, and vector is a quantity that has more information than just that. It has the magnitude, the size, and it has the direction of a measurement. And direction in physics usually means angle. Now, not all uh, physical quantities have direction. And that's what we have to kind of figure out. So, for example, if I tell you I walk five meters, I'm telling you uh, the length of my walk, the magnitude of my walk, but I didn't tell you which direction um, I walk. So all I'm giving you by saying five meters is the magnitude. So that is a scalar. Okay. Now if I say instead that I walked five meters, I walk five meters north. Now I'm giving you five meters. I'm giving you the magnitude and I'm giving you north, which is the direction. Because I'm giving you magnitude and direction, this sentence represents a vector. Okay, represents a vector. Notice that magnitude by itself is a scalar. So a vector actually has a scalar in it, right? So I like to think of vectors as sort of a box that contain two pieces of information inside of it, um, a magnitude and a direction. So to help illustrate that idea a little bit more, we're going to talk about position, displacement, and distance, which are three important variables in motion. Okay? So position is basically or simply just where you are, right? Shocking. Position is where you are, and it's represented by the letter X, and it's measured in meters. And position, the more formal definition, is that it's the displacement from origin, from the origin. And the origin just means some sort of arbitrary, you make it up, Re um, reference point some sort of arbitrary reference point uh, for example if you're walking uh, if you leave your house you might want to say that your house is your reference point though your origin doesn't have to be your initial position all right so speaking of that so here's your house let's say your jealous girlfriend or jealous boyfriend whatever calls and says hey where are you at and then you say oh don't worry I'm just five meters away from the house the problem with that is that five meters away from the house could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here. In fact, it could be in an infinite number. There's an infinite number of possibilities. And if you start plotting these and kind of connecting the dots, you get a circle that would have radius five. So your savvy boyfriend or girlfriend realizes that that's not good enough of an answer and says, well, which way are you? Five meters in what direction? And then you say, oh, yes, yes, five meters um, south. This is actually where you are. So you say, I am five meters south of the house. Okay. So because you fully describing a full description of position requires direction for it to make full sense, position is a vector. And here's the idea. Whenever you can ask the question, in what direction, that quantity is a vector, right? So I ran um, five meters uh, at five meters per second. In what way? Did you run to the left? Did you run to the right? So that's a vector, okay? So let's do some quick examples here. Time. Um, one hour has 60 minutes. So 60 minutes, is that to the left, 60 minutes to the right? That makes no sense. If you ask in what direction is those 60 minutes, that would make no sense. So this is not a vector, it is a scalar. Um, let's say a certain object is one meter long. In what direction? Well, it doesn't matter um, the direction of the object. That doesn't change the length of the object. So length um, has to do only with the size so it's a scalar, right? You could orient the object in different directions, but that doesn't actually change its length, okay? Um, mass is, let's say you are 150 pounds or whatever, and it wouldn't make sense to ask in what direction are you 150 pounds, right? That's just silly. So this is a scalar. 
temperature is kind of tricky because temperature could be positive and negative. And as you see, negatives and positives in physics have to do with direction. Um, however, in the case of temperature, direction, uh, the signs only have to do with whether you're bigger than zero or, or, or less than zero, obviously. And in this case, zero is just sort of an arbitrary reference point, right? So temperature is also a scalar. Now, force is a vector because if you tell me you push a box with a force of 10, um, it makes a difference if you push it to the left or to the right. So asking the question, in what direction would make sense, right? In what direction? So that's the basic difference between the two. Um, let's talk about displacement real quick. So displacement is defined as change in position. Now you have to be careful, and this happens a lot in physics, the words displacement and distance in everyday language are used sort of interchangeably with no noticeable difference. In physics, there's a big difference, right? So you have to be careful about that. So displacement is defined as the change in position. Now, mathematically, I'm going to write position final minus position initial. And position, remember, we talked about it, it's a vector. So I'm going to introduce the vector notation, which is when you put little arrows on top of the letters to represent that they're vectors. So there goes, there should be an arrow here. And I'm going to explain that this is, I'm going to write here that this is a vector notation or vector symbol, right? That little arrow there. So another way that you can write this instead of x final minus x initial, you can write x minus x naught. Now this is the more sophisticated PhD in physics way that a lot of professors will do. And x without anything just means final. And x with a zero means initial. Now technically it's not a zero, it's a naught, x naught. And, but it doesn't matter. So these are vectors as well, I can do this. And any time in physics or any other science or math that you have final minus initial, you can use the delta notation. So it looks like this, delta x. So the variable for displacement is delta x. Um, position is x, displacement is delta x, okay? And it is a vector because um, the direction matters. I could be going from the left to the right or from the right to the left. And since it's a vector, direction matters. Another way that you can think of this is that um, displacement is the shortest path from start to end. And that's sort of a visual representation. I'll show you that very soon. Distance is the scalar, meaning it has no direction, of displacement. And, ooh, and it's given by the letter D. Now, one way, sometimes this will be the letter S. Right? And sometimes they use S for displacement. It's a huge mess. Depends on the books, professors. Um, but I'm going to use D just because distance D, pretty simple. Um, one way to think about distance is a car's odometer. Now, what the heck is a car's odometer? Car's odometer is what tracks or counts your mileage. And the idea is that as you're driving, the car doesn't care if you're going to the left, to the right, um, north, south. It's always counting, and that's how distance works. It's always counting, okay? And your distance is always going to be either zero or positive. So your distance must be either greater than zero or positive. Your distance could never be negative because, again, negative is associated with direction, and distance is a scalar, and it has no direction. So I'm going to put here that this is a vector, this is a scalar, and distance is D. Cool. So let me show you three examples to kind of help illustrate this. One dimensional motion, two dimensional motion, and circular motion real quick. So in this case here, I'm going from A. Uh, there's two points, A and B. They are 10 meters apart. So this position I'm going to call zero. And this position is 10 in such a way that the gap between them is 10 meters. And that's the case in all of these. A, B, A, B. The only difference is that here I'm going to go from A to B, here I'm going to go from B to A, here I'm going to go from A to B to A. And I want to know what is the distance and displacement for all of these. So distance, I go from A to B, the gap between them, the separation between them is 10 meters, so that's my distance. 
Delta X is a little more complicated. The definition of delta X mathematically is X final minus X initial. Your final position is 10 minus your initial position. You started at 0, so this is 10. These numbers happen to be the same. That happens a lot, but not always, so you have to be careful. Let's look here. Distance. Again, you, close, you, you, covered a, you covered 10 meters, so that is your distance. It doesn't matter that you're going to the left doesn't care about this uh, direction. Delta X is X minus X initial. So if you plug in numbers, your final position is 0 and your initial position is 10. So if you do this carefully, you get a negative 10. And the number itself, 10 is the same, but you got a negative here. And this has to do with the direction. Positives and negatives in physics have to do with direction. Okay, And in this case, it means that you're going to the left, which makes sense according to the diagram. So notice that the numbers are no longer the same. They're the same here. They were not the same here. They're slightly different. Um, and then here, the distance is I moved 10 going from A to B, and I moved 10 going back from B to A. They're both positive because distance is always positive or never, never negative. So this is just 20 meters. And my delta x, my final position, I started at 0, and I ended at 0. So my final position is 0, my initial position is 0, my displacement is 0, and look how these numbers are now completely different. So you have to be careful between, uh, you have to be careful with the distinction between these two. Let me quickly do a two-dimensional motion. I'm going from A to B to C. From A to B it's 3 meters, and let's say that from B to C it's 4 meters. And I want to know the distance and your delta x. So distance doesn't care about direction, so it's just 3, and then I go 4, so my total distance is 7. If you're driving a car, it would show 7, irrespective of which way you're going. Delta x is more complicated. Remember the delta x was, I wrote here, the shortest path from start to end, right? Shortest path from start to end. So I'm going to do this. Boom. Right? And now I need to know the length of that blue line. Notice that this forms a little triangle, and the length of that blue line is basically going to be found using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse of that uh, triangle there. Okay, now this is going to come back later, but in physics, if you have motion in two dimensions like this, we're going to refer to your displacement in the x-axis as your delta x, Displacement on your y-axis as your, as your delta y, and displacement in two dimensions like this at an angle as delta r. We'll see more of this later. So basically what I'm looking for in this case is my delta r, and I'm going to do it using Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of the two sides, right? So it's 3 squared plus 4 squared, and this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so this is just 5 meters. Notice again how these numbers are very different, 7 and 5 completely different numbers. Okay, and in the last case, circular motion, if you go around the circle from point A back to point A, right, so you go kind of like this around a circle, your, I'm going to start with your displacement delta x, your displacement is zero because you're back to your initial position. You didn't technically change your position from the very beginning to the very end, right, you're back to the same position. Now your displacement is always counting. So if you're moving, your displace I'm sorry, your distance is always counting. So if you're moving, you have to have a distance. And in this case, it's the length of that blue line or red line, whatever, and that's the circumference, circumference of a circle, which is given by 2 pi r, where r is the radius. And that's it. And once again, notice how this number is very different from this number. So you have to be careful um, with the dis distinction between the two, and hopefully um, this made you realize that a little bit better. So that's it for now.